recently announced were an additional $200 million in cuts. But the number that was announced was $63 million. In reality, those cuts also caused the state of Connecticut to forego an additional $130 million in desperately needed federal revenue for this state. Is this is a crisis situation. This is a crisis certainly for hospitals, absolutely an unsustainable situation where we now have half a billion dollars being taken away from caring for patients. But it's also a crisis situation for everyone in Connecticut. If you or anyone you love needs hospital services or anticipates ever needing hospital services, and I think all of us do, if you know or you care for anyone who works in a hospital, or if simply you just care about this state's economy and the direction in which we are heading, this is of vital importance to you. Hospital CEOs here expressing how they feel, and more importantly, how it affects them, because they do this job every day. They run their hospitals, they deal with their docs, they deal with the patients, they know what the needs of their communities are. Cumulatively, those are the needs of the state of Connecticut. And when we sit there and we make cuts of $63 million to hospitals, which is bad enough, that's bad enough, but what the result is threefold, when it's almost $200 million with federal reimbursement, that doesn't seem like a good fiscal decision to me. As was said, uh, the projections that went into the budget turned out not to be accurate. So now there's a revenue shortfall. And spending, at least in the short term, has to be cut to balance the budget. The governor has limited tools at his disposal. You know, he has rescission authority. We believe that's a blunt instrument. We think by calling the legislature back in, we can have a more thoughtful approach to sit down and figure out what's going on here. This isn't about, we don't like these cuts, these cuts are better. That's not what this is about. This is about the process of budgeting in the state of Connecticut and how doing it in a patchwork way, almost month to month, based on a deficit that continues to come, is not an effective or an efficient way of doing it. The problem in running a system like, like ours, any of the CEOs, is these are complex environments. We operate 365 days a year, 24 hours a day, and lots of people are counting on us to be there. What Jennifer just said in terms of being in the community offering uh, preventive care services, unfortunately those are the services that we now struggle to provide because it's a financial challenge to do so. We'll be able to offer fewer of them, so access does become a problem. What is happening in this state, in Connecticut, is we're cutting and we're cutting costs and we're hoping that somehow quality miraculously appears. That's not going to happen. Quality is going to suffer. And it's not just the poor and the vulnerable. Because when these cuts at the hospitals, when they take effect, and, and when a patient comes into the hospital, we don't treat the poor and vulnerable differently than the commercially insured patient. So as the staff is decreased, as the waiting times go up, and as the quality suffers, all patients suffer, not just the poor and vulnerable. And that's what these cuts mean to us. These are devastating. We put together an entire budget. You may not like it, you may love it. But the fact that we all had our own budgets and our own budget ideas, and those conversations were not had when they were supposed to, in a responsible way, in a responsible budgeting way. I mean, if we're going to continue to do this month-to-month -month thing, we should just throw the whole budget process out, of, out the door and just let them operate by executive order. I mean, because that's kind of what happens here. Let's sit down and figure out where we're going and how we get there. So specifically, what is going to happen is people are going to lose their jobs at a time when we dramatically need job growth in this state. The economy of the state of Connecticut will be harmed. What a lot of people don't realize is what a huge part of the economy hospitals are. We contribute $20 billion to the state's economy on an annual basis. So jobs will be lost. There will be longer wait times services will be cut. Many cities have reinvented themselves on health care. Cleveland, Baltimore are two examples of cities that have grown and prospered because health care is an economic driver and we are destroying one of the true economic drivers in this state.